Now let's work on a parallel RL circuit. You'll find where this will be far more common. When we get into the, into the fourth year of the program, we'll be working with impedance and power factors of circuits and so on, and we'll deal mainly with, with parallel circuits. Let's put one on the board here. We'll put uh, alternating current, of course, and we'll put a resistor and an inductor in that circuit. R1, we'll assign a value of 20 ohms. We'll uh, deal with 60 cycles per second for a frequency. For L1, let's put down, I've got one previously worked out here, we'll go 79.6 millihenries. Okay, now what we want to do is find total opposition to current flow on this circuit. We're going we're gonna to look for the impedance of this circuit. Now, we know in a parallel circuit that the voltage now across all the components is the same. The current now is additive. The resistance now, we use the reciprocal method. And power, remember, is additive in any circuit. So now we're going to use a little bit different procedure to find our impedance. Remember that impedance, to find impedance now, that what we're looking for is total opposition to current flow in this circuit. Now in the previous circuit, when we had a series circuit, remember that resistance is additive. And that in a series circuit, we added by the right triangle method. In other words, my impedance for, uh, for a series circuit was R squared plus x sub l minus x sub c quantity squared. Now this was a series, the way we would treat it in a series circuit. Well, now here we've got a parallel. And in a parallel circuit, we can't treat it like this. We have to use the reciprocal method. Now there is a way we can do that directly. Uh, I want to take the least complex to start with method of finding impedance for a parallel circuit. So what we want to do, we can't use this because it's not additive. Okay, so we'll get rid of this. Okay, now what we have to do is to find another parameter. Find another parameter that is additive that we can find. Now you see, in this circuit we know that current is additive. That would mean if I knew what the current was in each of those branches, I can add them together and then get the total. In other words, if I put an ammeter right here in the circuit, that would be my total current. Now it's additive, but we have dissimilar components. So we have to add them by the vector method, or the right triangle method. The voltage, like we said, is the same, so that I know the parameter for voltage. If I know the voltage over here, then I can find it all the way through the circuit. Now let's put a voltage on this circuit of 300 volt. Okay. Now with that in mind, Go back to our circuit. Now you see I have opposition to current flow in the form of resistance. Over here I have I have the value of that inductor. Remember now that to find that value of that opposition to current flow here, we're referring to the reactants. And we know that the symbol for reactants is X sub L, and the formula would be two pi f l. In other words, I'm going to have a constant three, uh, 2 times 3.14 times my frequency 
which is 60 cycles per second, times the value of that inductor in Henry's. Okay? Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take 2 times 3.14 times 60. Now what I have to do is to convert this to Henry's. We're going to go right with our prefix. We have to go left with our decimal three places. So my multiplier here would be point zero seven nine six. If I multiply that on out, you'll see that I will come up with 30 ohms then for a value of inductive reactance for that inductor now. Okay. Now let me get rid of this and I will plug in the value for our inductive reactants of L1 and we have 30 ohms. Okay. Now we know that's a parallel circuit so we'll get rid of as much stuff here as we can. Okay. Now we have a parallel circuit. We know that in a parallel circuit voltage is the same across all its parts. That means I'm going to have 300 volts for a parameter for the resistor. I'm going to have 300 volts for a parameter for that inductor. Okay? Now, if I want to find the current in each one of those branches, I can use Ohm's Law again. I know I then is equal to E divided by R. I'm going to have E for 300 volts divided by, by my 20. I'm going to have then 15 amp flowing through this particular branch. Now I'm going to put an ammeter right in that branch and we know we have 15 amp for that branch. Okay, now we'll do the same thing we know I is also uh, equal to E divided by X. And to be specific, it's X sub L. If I plug in what I know for that, I will have 300 again because it's a parallel circuit divided by 30, which is equal to 10 amps of reactive current. So if I would put a, I'll put my ammeter down here in this branch. If I put an ammeter right here, I know that I would have 10 amp flowing in that branch. Now, you see we're looking for total current now. I know what the value of current is in this branch. In this branch, we know in a parallel circuit that current is additive. But now because we have dissimilar components, that means we have to add it by the right triangle method. So to find my total current, I'm going to have to use the vector method. Okay, let's get rid of some of this again. Now, we're going to have so much true or real current, and in this case we're looking at, at uh, 15 amp, 15 amp. We're going to have here so much reactive current. In this case, my reactive current is 10 amp. Okay. Now, our total current for that circuit now, my I sub T, would be to right triangle this to find out my total current. Okay. Now, what I'll do, I'm going to take, in other words, I'm going to have I'm going to have a formula where I'm looking for my Z. In this case, my I sub T is my Z is equal to the square root now of, now here's my reactive and here's my real current. Okay? It's going to be my R, my, uh, my current and my resistor. Let me write it like this. Be my current my true current, or my real current, squared, plus my current now in my reactor, squared. Okay? 
we're going to have now uh, 15 squared plus 10 squared. I'm running out of room here. I will put the answer right here. So we're going to have, in this case, we'll have 15 quantity squared plus 10 quantity squared equals and square root. We will have 18 then. 18 amp for a total current. Okay. Now I can get rid of some of this again. We we'll use now the vector method to find total current. My total current here is 18 amp. Okay. Now, we're looking for total opposition to current flow in this circuit, or impedance. Now, to find impedance here, I'm coming through the back door, if you will. I, I, I couldn't add together my uh, resistance and my reactance in this case because we know we had to use the reciprocal method. Well, we can't use reciprocal method. Uh, we can use unequal branch. I'll show you that method in a little bit. But let's, let's use this route first. Now, what we've done, we knew what our opposition to current flow was. We knew what our voltage was. That meant so we could find the current in our branches. Through the, through the vector method, we found out what our total current was. Now, to find our total opposition to current flow, I would have to then take my total voltage and divide it by my total current. In this case, we have 300 divided by 18. And if I hit the calculator again, we will have 16 and 2 thirds ohms. So we will round that off. We'll have 16.2 six seven ohms for impedance this would be my answer now for my total opposition to current flow now there's another method that I can show you we'll try and come up with this same answer I'll write it up here we know that that our impedance is equal to 16.67 ohms okay now let's I'll try a We'll try another method here and see if we can come out with the same answer. Now, if you will remember, when we had parallel resistors, or inductors, or capacitors, whatever the case, well, we got to say resistors and inductors, and series capacitors, we'll go that route, that we would use a reciprocal method on those. Or now we've got a, a situation here where we have an unequal branch, you might say. And if I use a special method, I can come up with my impedance without going through the trouble of finding my current. Now, if I had a circuit where I had a combination circuit where I had a, a resistor right here at this point, you see, it wouldn't do me any good to bring this value of voltage over here because I'm going to have a voltage drop before it gets to that point. And I can't find out what the voltage drop is at that point until I find out what my current flow is. So you see, I would, I would be uh, in a little trouble in a situation like that. Now, we aren't going to get into overly complex circuits. Um, it just isn't practical for us. We really don't have to worry about that situation. But let me show you how this would be done. I think it'll be interesting for you, and you might want to try this. If, if I know my value of resistance and my value of reactance, I can use the method that we use. Remember the unequal branch method? If I, hit, if I knew my R, if I was looking for my R sub T, I could take my R1 times R2 all over R1 plus R2. Now, this was for parallel resistors. 
and parallel inductors. I could put L sub T and L L through here. I could I could use the same method for my series capacitors too. I could say my C sub T is equal to C one times and so on, and uh, and also use this. Now we have a resistor and an inductor here. We don't have resistors. We have a resistor and an inductor, and we have to treat them different. We can multiply their two values together the way it shows us here. But what we're going to have to do when we add them is to add them by the right triangle method, see? So I could come up with a formula where I could use those values to calculate. Let me show you. I'll get rid of this and we'll write our new formula in here. We're looking for our impedance, our total opposition to current flow. What we're going to have to do is multiply our resistance times my reactance. In other words, I'll be specific of my inductor. And then I'm going to have to add, now I can multiply their values. Now to add their values, you see, I would have to use the right triangle method. In other words, I'm going to take R squared plus my X sub L quantity squared, and we should come up with the same answer. Let's try it. We're going to take here, we're going to take 20 times 30 all over the square root of 20 squared plus 30 squared. Yeah, I would have then 600. And now what I'm going to have to do is go to the calculator. We will have 20 quantity squared plus 30 uh, quantity squared equals 900 equal, equals 1300 and uh, if I take the square root of that I would have 36 down here okay I'll divide 36 now. I'll take uh, six, 600 divided by 36 equals 16 and two-thirds. So bingo, we've got it, 16.67. So you see we came out now with the very same answer. So you could use this method that I just showed you, or you can find the currents, right triangle those, and come up with total current. And then you see if you use parameters, if I stick with my parameters, I take total current into total voltage, gives me total opposition to current flow, which in this case is impedance. Okay? Now, what we want to do is put a capacitor in this circuit and just see what happens to this situation. Now this will be true as well. You'll see where we can add a capacitor to this circuit. And let me shorten things up a little bit here. We know our inductive reactance is equal to 30 ohms. Let's just get rid of some of this stuff we've got here that we don't need. Let's put a capacitor on here. Now, we know that a capacitor of with a with a brand. Now I'm gonna have to move this too. Because this current in here. I'm going to have the current of that branch if I st stuck it in there, so I'm going to have to move it back up here. And we said that we had 10 amps here, right? If we had an, an X sub L, X sub L is equal to 30 ohms. Now here, if I had, I'm going to close our circuit, if I had a capacitor that had an inductive re or capacitive reactance now of 30 ohms, I would have, if I put a, uh, an ammeter in here, I would have 10 amps also in that branch. Now, you would see in a situation like this, if 
if I have an inductor and a capacitor with branches with the same amount of current flow, you see our, our, uh, our currents in those branches are, are added vectorially. In other words, they're equal and opposite. In this branch, my, my capacitor, my current wants to lead, and in this branch, in the inductor, my current wants to lag. So between the two, those oppositions of current flow will cancel one another. Now let's, let's go back one more step before we, we work this out and say, well now, how could I have figured out what value of C1 it would have taken to, to end up with, with 30 ohms of capacitive reactants? Now, here's where we can go back to the algebra that you learned in the, in the first year of the program. If, if I know from my capacity of reactants formula that x sub c is equal to 1 over 2 pi f c. Okay, now I know what value of capacity of reactants I want, but I want to find that value for c. Okay, now let's use a little algebra and try and isolate that variable out of there. If I get rid of my fraction over here, you'll see that, that on this side of my formula, if I multiply this side over here by, I'm going to have to make myself a little more room. Let's get over here a little bit. We, x sub c is equal to 1 over 2 pi f c. Okay, if I want to get rid of this fraction over here, I would have to multiply this side by 2 pi f c. That means I would have to come over here and multiply this times 2 pi f c. Okay, that would give us then a value of, of uh, equal to 1. In other words, this side is equal to 1. Now, what I want to do is to get rid of everything but that C. In other words, I don't need this parentheses around here. All of those values are multiplied or equal to 1, see. Now, I'm using this al by, by using algebra now, I'm going to get that C out of there. Now, if all of those variables are multiplied, that means I can take all of those variables but the C and divide 2 pi f c. Okay, whoop, no, 2 pi f x sub c. Now that means then I gotta come over here and do the same thing. 2 pi f x sub c. Now I'm gonna get rid of everything on this side but that c, and you'll see that what we actually did was transpose those two variables, but I've showing you through algebra how that can be done, see. Okay, now we're going to find out, we know all of those variables, we're going to find out what value of C it would have taken to get that. So what we would do, we would have 1 over 2 times 3.14 times 60 cycles per second times 30 and then take it into 1. If I do that, and I worked that all out already, if we do that, we will have some place here. Um, we will come out with a value of point zero seven nine six for an answer. I better try that, make sure we have the right value. I'm going to take 6.28 times 60 times 30 equals inverse, no, nope, this wasn't my answer. It's supposed to be point 
four zeros. One, two, three, four, eight, eight, five. Now the unit of measure of capacitance is farads. So this is farads. If I want to change this now to microfarads, I'm going to I'm going to move it to the left two places, two prefixes to the left. That means I have to go right with my decimal, six decimal places. So I'm going to go two, four, six. If I put a microfarad in there, we would have then 88.5 microfarads. So we would have 88.5 microfarads. I don't know where this other number came from that I had, but this should be right. One way to check yourself, one way to check it is to go back to our formula again. We know that, that our x sub c is equal to 1 over 2 pi f c. If we plug in, we'd have to change that back to uh, farads again and uh, put that value of 0 0.40885 on here times 60 times 3.14 times 2 and then divide that all into 1 and then you should come out with 30 ohms and uh, I'm sure that's right so I won't waste time checking it again you might want to check it do it that way okay now back to our problem again, we have it figured out now that we have 10 amps in here, 10 amps. We have 10 amps in both reactors, and we have 15 amps in our resistor. Now, remember that when we add added currents that we had a real value of current. In other words, our conductor in our resistor was going to be equal to 15. We're going to have 10 amps of current in our inductor. Okay, I'll put uh, current in our inductor. And then in our capacitor, we'll have 10 amps of uh, current in our capacitor as well. Okay, now you see we have opposing forces here. One would cancel the other. When I do that, then my total current in the circuit, now you'll see has dropped down from 18 now to 15 amps. By putting that capacitor in the circuit, I've dropped my total current down now by 3 amps. And you'll see when we get into uh, when we get into capacitor banks and so on that we can in our circuit we can cut down our current in our line. Of course, we cut down the current in our line with a capacitor you'll see what'll happen, then we'll, get le we'll have less voltage drop. That in turn would give us less line losses. So we're gonna turn around, we're gonna apply this. You wanna make sure you understand this stuff because we're gonna apply it to, to capacitor. What we will do is to, to apply this to power. Now we haven't talked about power specifically. Not when it comes to uh, to reactive, true, and apparent power, and so on. You'll see that 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 when we apply this to power, we're going to have three units of measure of power. In fact, we'll call the power all different. When it comes to total power, that will be our P sub A, and that will be our apparent power. This is. This is the capacity that we would want in our circuit because it has to handle that total or apparent power. We will have P sub T, uh, T now, which stands for true, which would be the power in our resistive load. And uh, then, of course, that's measured in watts. Our apparent power is going to be measured in volt amps. Our reactive power would be the power that would be in our inductor and our capacitor. And of course, remember that power is also going to be additive. Our reactive power now is in VARs. Now, when we say total power, we're going to be, the most common value for us is going to be put, put a K prefix on there. In other words, KVA. 
we're going to talk about kilowatts. That's true power. That's our resistive load is going to be our 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 uh, kilowatts. See, now kvars would be our reactive load. This this would be our power in our reactors, reactors, capacitors, that sort of thing, and. And of course, that's that's what we rate our uh, capacitors in in is uh, is K bars. So we're going to apply this, and it's going to be highly important to the program. In fact, you'll be able to if we were putting a capacitor bank out here. You see, we could we could take our volts times our amps. We would have three thousand in this case. We're lurking those small figures, but we could say that we would have three. Uh, thousand vars or three k vars. If I put a three k var capacitor in there, you see, then I could drop the current in that circuit. You see, down to where I would have less line loss and so on. So we're gonna we're gonna apply this to to uh, capacitor banks. By the way, I see that I've got kva indicated here. I'd said k var, and of course that would have an r on the end of it. Uh, we'll do more work with this so you'll, you'll have plenty of practice with this before we get done. Okay, let's take a break now. I've got some practice problems for you on circuits. Then we'll go on in the program. We'll, uh, we'll be work, doing a lot of work now with transformers. And uh, I'll do a little review so do your practice problems, then uh, after your break, what we'll do, we'll give you the answers that you should have for, for your quiz.